Okay, here's another one. Great opportunity. If we get a, a daily close, which you probably will, which is below the low of this kangaroo tail, then that's a busted kangaroo tail, right? It's going to fall through here, and the market will probably bust through here next week. So that's a great opportunity next week to trade this busted kangaroo tail. But we need confirmation. We need a close on the daily below this low. So that's trade one, right? Hey there, it's Walter here from FX Jake, and I want to talk about a naked forex setup. A lot of people were watching this setup. This was the pound US dollar, and I've had some questions about this. What I think I um, should do here is talk about why, uh, to me, this was not a buy, and in fact, I think it's going to be a pretty good sell. Um, although, eh, it could have, the close on the daily candle here could have been a little bit better. But let, let's just talk about this. First of all, there's no doubt that it's a nice support and resistance area where this little tiny candle printed. Uh, we see that we, we topped out here, we found some resistance, and we certainly did have some support as well where you can find, oh, I don't know, there's about three candles where it just couldn't break through here, back here, and then it finally did break through. Even when it came up, back up and broke through, look what happened. It closed right on that level this day right here. That's uh, May, sorry, that's June 5th where the market came and closed right there. And then the next day, of course, it came back up. Now, with the big fall, it came down and it, it printed a little kangaroo tail there. Now, a lot of people will trade um, what they call Pinocchio bars. Um, and that's from, um, what's his name, Martin Pring. It's in Martin Pring's book, and a lot of people will trade those. I trade kangaroo tails, and they're a little bit different from Pinocchio bars because what happens with um, the Pinocchio bars is that people tend to just look for any old candle that you know gives you the look of a Pinocchio bar. And what I do with kangaroo tails is I actually have specific rules that I follow. So for for example, there are some that just wouldn't qualify. Um like this one right here just wouldn't qualify for me as a sell si signal just because of where it's at and it's in a choppy market. Um so there are specific rules that I'm looking for in terms of my trades and a lot of people who like for example this one wouldn't wouldn't have qualified either. And let's talk about why. The the simplest way to look at this is that the close and the open are important. And the close and open must be in the bottom third of the candle. Now, uh, when we're talking about this one, this would be a sell setup, obviously, because the market's been moving up. And the close and the open must be in the, in the bottom third for a sell setup. If this were a buy setup, it'd have to be in the top third, OK? So that's the first rule. And you can see here that that certainly is the case here. If I have any questions, I can always pull my fib grid across and see. And it looks like um, it's well, in fact, it's in the bottom 23%, the open and the close here. So it certainly fits that one. So in terms of that rule, it would work. The next thing is that I want to see some space or room to the left of my kangaroo tail. And you can see here that this kangaroo tail has a whole lot of space. I can pull this uh, box across and, and show you visually the space that it has. I have to pull it up a little bit because this tail is in the way. But what that means is to the left of this candle there isn't a lot of price action. The reason that's important is because we're generally trading reversal setups when we trade kangaroo tails. And we don't know that the market's going to reverse here. At this stage, when we see this candle print right here, we don't know if this is going to be a reversal, if the market's going to fall here. But we do know that if it is a reversal, it's most likely going to have a lot of room to the left. If you look at those reversal points on the chart, they often print out on areas of the chart where there hasn't been any recent price action. That's very important. Um, Here's another kangaroo tail here. Look at look at how this this is all obviously also a double bottom, but look how this candle sags so low that the the bottom of the candle has printed an area on the chart where we haven't seen any recent price action, right? There, like that. So that's pretty critical for these setups, all right? So that obviously also fits. So so far we have that rule also ticked off, which is number two, which is 
we have space or room to the left of our candle. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move that. I was gonna move that and get out of the way, but oh well. Two space to the left of the candle. All right. Number three. What's our third rule about trading? Um, eh, now I can move it. Kangaroo tails. The open and the close must be inside the previous candle's range. You can see that's where this one starts to fall apart. Open and close inside of previous candle. And what I mean by that is that the previous candle has a high and a low. Okay, The previous candle must have a high that is higher than the open and the close of the kangaroo tail. And the open and the close of the kangaroo tail must be um, higher than the low of the previous candle. So you can see this previous candle here has a high. I'm looking down here, right? This previous candle has a high of 5906. The close obviously is not inside the previous candle because the close is at 5915. So it missed it. It missed it by nine pips. So that didn't work out here. That's the third rule. And the fourth rule is that the next candle, the very next candle, should trigger the trade. Now, that means it should make a new high or a new low. Um, so the next candle trades higher or lower for the case of a sell trade than the kangaroo tail. Now uh, what I do is I'll put a sell order below the low of the kangaroo tail. So the low on this candle was 58.97. Now I would put a sell order at 58.92 or 58.90 right around there, so, you know, 5 to 7 pips below the low of that tail of that kangaroo tail and you can see the next candle actually didn't trigger that it wouldn't have triggered that order it went as low as 96 so while it did go one pip lower it certainly didn't go seven pips lower or even five pips lower and it wouldn't have triggered my order now why is that important well i want the market to tell me that it wants to go in that direction now there's another thing about this which is where it gets kind of tricky which is in essence I don't want to take this trade if the new high or the new low is made during the Asian session. Now, why is that important? Why is the Asian session coming into this? Now, remember, this is for daily chart trade only. If I'm trading, you know, a one hour or a four hour candle, it's totally different rules. But if it's a daily chart candle, which is what I normally like to trade, then I am not going to be triggered in the Asian session. I won't even put my order in until after the Asian session or the, at the very end of the Asian session. So, and, and the reason why is there's a couple of reasons. Number one, the Asian session tends to go in the wrong direction. So, if we're looking at like this candle right here, and you're going to have to take my word for it. Well, we can look at it. We can look and see. This candle right here, you can see that it made a wick here, right? Now, I don't know if this is true, but I believe that this candle, which is the February 8th, 2012, I believe that this wick would have been made during the Asian session. You don't believe me? I don't know the answer to this, but we're going to go ahead and risk it and see what the answer is. So let's go to the one hour chart and look at February 8th, 2012. See if we can get that, bring that one up here. There it is. Okay, so. Uh, oh, if I put the um, period separators, you'll see where the new day starts here. So obviously the new day on this candle that I've highlighted uh, started right here where this dashed line is. Let's zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. So the new day, I had it on right here um, where that red line was. The new day started here. So the previous candle closed on this candle and then the next day starts here. So the Asian session starts out the day and you can see this is exactly what happened. The market went up for the first eight hours or so. It sort of peaked right here at the beginning of the European trading session and then it fell and then when New York came in it went up a little bit, a little bit of fake out and then it fell for the rest of the day. So you can see what happened here was exactly what I was talking about which uh, is that the Asian session will go in one direction and usually Europe or New York or both will go in another direction. 
So here we have an example of the market going up 33 pips uh, during the Asian session. Of course, the beginning of the New York session, we'll talk more about that, or the London session. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And then it goes down for 113 pips for the rest of the day. So this is very typical of what happens during a uh, typical Asian or uh, typical daily candle that the Asian session will go in the quote wrong direction that is why I won't place my order here because my guess is that this candle right here the the wick and the where it went one pip lower than the, the kangaroo tail that probably happened during the Asian session so one I want to definitely clear it by at least five pips and two I don't want it to happen during the Asian session because that's usually when it's messing around going the wrong direction now let's talk about this candle right here so there are a couple of things I don't like about it one the candle before it was huge and very bearish it closed near the low and it didn't show any slowing down what I mean by slowing down is that see how when the market moved up here all of these candles started printing more wicks wick 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 see how these wicks started to show up that's usually a sign of exhaustion and that the market wants to fall uh, we don't have any real wicks here the only wick we got at this stage was the kangaroo tail and even that wasn't that impressive um, especially considering the previous two candles previous two candles were pretty big this one was 159 pips and this one was 230 pips and our measly little kangaroo tail here although it, it fits all the rules it's only 102 pips so you know it's got an open and the close inside the previous candles range it's got an open and the close in the top third it's on a nice support and resistance level remember we had support here resistance there but the fact is there's still some downward pressure here now let's take a look and see if the market actually triggered the uh, a buy above this because remember the buy would have been right about here let me let me draw it on the chart would have been a few pips above the high it would have been right around there whoops right around there let's look at the one hour chart and see where it would have been triggered all right so here's our uh, kangaroo tail right here this is this is the day before where it went down and here's our kangaroo tail right here on the one hour chart it looks like a big dish on the one hour but obviously on the daily it's a nice little tiny kangaroo tail so our buy order is above the high the high of the kangaroo tail was actually at the end of the day right here and so that high is 55.16 so a buy order around 55.21 would have been fine which is right here okay now the market doesn't quite hit it during the Asian session however here on this so this is if you're in Australia for example this candle closes at the moment it changes during you know parts of the year but this one will close at uh, 7 a.m. Um, this one closes so that closes at 8 a.m. 9 a.m. 10 11 12 1 2 3 4 5 okay so this one closes at 8 a.m. London time. So this would be um, 8 to 9 in the morning. So this is the opening candle in London. So what you had here was sort of a, a pre-open spike that tagged and, and triggered the trade. Now I can see where people especially if you're in North America and you go to sleep around these candles you might put your order in and then boom you get spiked in before the European session and actually this is quite typical if we look back at other trade other um, let's bring up my pound chart here if you look back what you'll see is that this move here is quite typical this is I've marked here the opening candle which is the 8 a.m. candle in London alright that's 8 a.m. And um, obviously the 7 to 8 a.m. candles where it triggered the, the order, would have triggered an order. And you can see what's happened here is that it's moved down after that. So you get a little spike and then it goes. Here's another one. This is the, um, this, is the uh, can this candle right here. So this candle is 8 a.m. So that's the opening candle. And that's the candle before the opening candle. Here's the candle before the opening candle. There's the 8 a.m. candle when the London market opens. Here's again. Here's the candle before the opening um, market 
This is from 7 to 8 a.m. in London. This is the 8 a.m. candle. You, do you notice a pattern here? <laughs> here's the <laughs> here's the opening candle in London. Here's the one before. It didn't really do much. Um, here here's an instance where 7 to 8 a.m. London the market went down and then it kept going down and then New York took it higher. But um, this is pretty pretty typical. Here's another one here where the market before the open the market really fell and then at the open it just kind of sat there. You know so. You have to watch out for that op that London market spike, the pre-open spike. It will usually happen between 7 and 8 a.m. London time. So it's this pre-open candle. So that's another thing to watch out for. Now, I don't, you know, if I got triggered on that candle, I'd, I'd be okay with it. But the, f the fact is the overall picture of the market was not telling me that it was slowing down. And the reason I say that is because we had really big candles before this kangaroo tail. Um, also, it does have a little bit of space, but remember, it, relative to these previous candles, this candle is quite small. So yesterday, uh, when this candle was forming, I was hoping that it would actually close below the low of the kangaroo tail, because I want to sell this sucker and go against the kangaroo tail. This is what I call a busted kangaroo tail. Now, if you look here, the low is 54.13, and it closed at 54.16, so it closed a little bit higher than the low. But I think next week, when the market opens, it's probably going to give us a great opportunity to sell and target these highs right here and then these highs right here. Um, but again, I want to see the market sort of take out the low of this candle, which was Friday's candle, and that low is 67. So if it can get to 53.60, that would be great. And then I can sell it all the way down to these highs, these highs, and even these lows. So that's approximately. 90 pips for the first target and then another 200, 210 to the second target. So that to me is a pretty good looking setup on the pound. I just wanted to explain that because I know a lot of people were asking, you know, they took it, why did they get burned, what was happening here, all those sorts of questions. I think you really have to put everything together here. You see that the momentum is not slowing down. You see that the candle was triggered during the open opening or pre-opening of the London market which is often a spike. Um, even worse would have been if it had triggered during the Asian session. That would have just been awful. So lots of reasons to not take this trade. And I just wanted to show you how I see it. And in fact, why I was thinking about taking this trade in the opposite direction and selling it. Um, so I wish you happy trading. And we hope I hope to talk to you soon. Okay.